Here's some indoor plant updates. So we've got a lemon tree and an avocado tree growing on the on the windowsill. Both looking really good. It's a little bit cool here. So I was a little afraid of how cool it is right next to the window, but um, this is the south facing side of the house and really is the best place for them, but looking very healthy. Um, and then we've got a bunch of elephant ears that we're also growing. These were basically cuttings from the pond. So we're keeping them indoors and growing elephant ears and they're doing wonderful. Look at the size of that. And there's Harry. Hey buddy. And here are some more elephant ears. Same idea, south facing part of the house. So just propagating free plants basically. These were all from one plant so um, we might sell them, we might put them around the pond, but right now they're actually cleaning and filtering the air in the house and they look wonderful. And we got some more cuttings here and another couple here. And these were basically just taken by fracturing the roots. So a bunch of free, bunch of free plants. So just before Christmas, we had a snow melt followed by a rain. And I popped outside to go take a look at some of the uh, swales and other, uh, you know, rain run, uh, roof runoffs and contours and how they were doing with snow melt and water. So let's show some of those quick clips right now. And then we're going to go outside and take a look at some um, wildlife spotting. Well, not the actual wildlife, but uh, their droppings. And Jenny, go outside. You want to go chase some rabbits, eh? All right. All right. All right. All right. What you got? Go on. So this is my... This is my deer protection and rabbit fencing as well. Jenny. It's raining right now. Um, and this water from the roof is being piped into this pipe here that runs underground and it runs underground over here and lets out into this swale and you can see it's filling up so it's filling up And the swale cuts, the swale cuts like this, and that swale is filling up right now. So all this rain isn't leaving my property, it's all being held in this swale. It's going to get stuck there, held, stored, and then it's going to sink down into the ground and recharge the water table. So small things like this can really help you in the spring making sure that there's a good underground source of water for plants and reduce watering needs. So it's nice to see it working. See, and you can even see these edged, carved in walkways that I have. The water comes across, hits these and stores inside these and then um, basically is held and stored for the trees as well. So these are functional um, they divide out the grass, they stop the grass creeping in, uh, but they also act as little mini swales in rain events. Alright, I just want to show, you know, the whole gardening with nature in mind. This is a raspberry patch, and you can see that feeding the bunnies has led to quite nice gifts of their fertility all through the raspberries and this is all fairly new it's and it's all over the place you know so when i say i have tons and tons and tons of rabbits 
I'm not kidding. I have rabbits absolutely everywhere. <laughs> Tons of rabbits. Let's go looking and see if we see any other signs of life. I think a big part of why we're having so much success with that here, um, all this winter fertility, is because we've left up some of this perennial kale. We're in January now in Zone 4 Canada, so things have not been growing for a few months now, but this kale is still feeding rabbits right into January. And then the rabbits are feeding my soil. Now I was just down here with the winter video a couple days ago and already um, there's a, just tons and tons of wildlife footprints all over here using and drinking from our fresh water here. Now we're down here at the Old Man Walking Trail and something big came up from the river here. Um, possibly deer but it looks more like maybe wolf or something my dogs can't get down in there see if i can find a fresh clean print and it kind of ran across here and then ran all down here could be looking for the apples if it's deer but it looks more like a paw and like i said my dogs can't get down here so, and I hear wolves howling, so it's possible it could be wolves, and then it ran off into, into here. So, we have wildlife, and it's always fun to see them in the winter time when you see their tracks. You can kind of see some of them closer here. This does not look like deer whatsoever. Looks like some kind of large, rather medium-sized wolf. Or a wild dog, maybe chasing whatever this is, chipmunk. And it kind of ran all down through here. And look, it's kind of nice. They were actually using my trails. You can see they kind of followed the trail. They're kind of using my walking path that I designed. This is interesting. Scooted right through my gardens and went right in towards my Jerusalem artichokes. So that's kind of interesting. Kind of beelined right in towards them. Maybe chasing something. Looks like a rabbit was down here. Probably chasing the rabbit. Kind of cool. So we're up at the main food forest strip here. And I'm just showing this raspberry patch here. Because this was covered in rabbit manure uh, yesterday. Just before this fresh snow fell. And it's all covered with snow now. So you can't see it. But this was covered just the way the other one was a day ago. So that... The other uh, rabbit droppings is just fresh, just last night. All right, so we're also going to do another batch of kombucha. And uh, we're going to try to take some pine needles from this guy. So we're going to do a pine needle second ferment. So let's see how that goes. All right, so water is boiled. So we do uh, 12 cups of water and then 14 tea bags and then let that sit, two cups of sugar and then we put another 12 cups of water and we mix that with two cups of um, previous kombucha. So and then we're going to do some second ferments with these. Alright so here is the second ferment. So we're going to basically just leave this room temperature somewhere dark and we're going to get some Christmas tasting kombucha. See, I'll let you know how it is. Okay, and at the same time we're going to do some pine needle tea. So we actually cut these up um, to just kind of get them a little lower because when I fill the pot I don't want them just floating to the top. I want them in there steeping. So we cut them up and we're going to put them in here. And we're going to try some pine needle tea as well. Okay, so pine needle tea is super easy. Basically just boil water and then put pine needles in it and let it steep for about 20 minutes. Um, you don't want to boil the water with the pine needles in it because it'll turn really bitter and it'll actually destroy a lot of the vitamin C. So it's a very vitamin C heavy drink. Um, when they were having problems with scurvy, uh, when they first came over to North America, they were actually called the pine needle uh, 
pine needle tea and the pine tree, the miracle tree, because it was basically saving their lives. So just be careful what kind of pine you have. Just one warning. Um, there are varieties of pine. Um, they're typically off family varieties that look like pine, um, but there are some varieties of pine that are toxic. So mine's an eastern white pine, and that one is fine. So just get a double ID on your pine tree before you do this. Uh, post it to Reddit at what's this plant, and tell them your zone and location. Take photos of the whole tree and then also the needles really close up, and any kind of genetics you have, like an acorn or anything like that. Uh, so um, make sure that you check out which variety you have, and then just double check that's safe to consume, and then enjoy your pine needle tea. Really Hi, watching it. Hi. He wants whatever you're eating to fall down. I know. He sees what you're eating. Can you give him a little bit or no? Won't make him sick? Not like a little piece. Sit. Over here. Sit. Sit. Ha, 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 ha.